that I was either working like 60 hours a week or, you know, just not working at all. <laughs> you know, it's like you can't, yeah, you can't do both and, you know, can't have it all. Yeah. Gotta not half-ass two things, whole-ass one thing. That's what I do. Well, I figured I worked hard enough for a while. Uh, what'd you What'd you do? Well, after not going to college, <laughs> I went and worked for like Pepsi for a while. Uh, as like a stalker for like a year and a half, and that was like 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. You know, driving your own car to the store and just like stocking Pepsi products all day, and after that was like a maintenance worker at high school like uh, mowing fields and painting lines and um, cleaning classrooms and cleaning toilets and you know this was all before I you know thought you could like tour and make you know make yeah. money playing music and then I worked for uh, a bunch of like similar jobs like that like you know, very low paying, uh, kind of manual labor, which is, you know, uh, I'd rather do that than be in like an office or something, you know, mowing like the fields kind of, it was like pretty great. Yeah. You just put in some headphones and you're just out there for like three hours and all you got to do is just go up and down. So it could be kind of therapeutic. Um, and then I got a job working for, a transportation company driving around disabled vets. It was like a big van, and there was like a gate that would go up and down in the back, and you wheel them in, strap them down, and just go from like usually the Long Beach Veterans Hospital to you know wherever they lived, either in Long Beach or sometimes all the way out in like Apple Valley or. Wow, it's a far drive. Far drive, but I mean, you know, that was kind of a nice day too. It's like that was just like your shift. You just pick them up in Apple Valley, bring them to Long Beach, hang out for an hour, and then take them back. You know, that's your eight hours. But that job was nuts. I mean, it was just so emotionally like draining. Just seeing that like amount of like uh, people in like uh, kind of like dire situations. Right. But you also meet some very sweet just beautiful like uh veterans that have just like been through hell and back but are just like the most decent kind of people you know yeah they teach you all kinds of shit and you know it's very hard and very rewarding at the same time that's a good deal yeah. i mean the good and the bad yeah minus the ugly yeah <laughs> but uh but that was about the time when uh, I started playing more and more. I mean, I'd always played music. Mm -hmm. My dad's a music teacher. It was like not an option to not play music as yeah, a kid. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, but around that time, it's I started knowing people that like went on tour or like had record deals or you mm -hmm. know. So it was like kind of this. Okay, maybe. I know I'm good at playing music. I probably can't write an album and tour, but maybe I can just get out, you know, from working. Right. And that's kind of what happened, more or less. Was it people around here that were getting record deals, or was it mainly in L.A.? No, it's mainly in L.A. Uh, so I had moved to Highland Park in about 2011 or 2012. A buddy of mine had, he'd been up in the Bay Area uh, for school and ended up staying up there. And then he moved back and uh, wanted to get a place. So Was it uh, Robbie or Matt? No, so this is a whole different... Uh, scene? Different, I wouldn't say scene, just a different group of friends. Mm -hmm. Like, these are all my friends from here that went away to college and like, you know, that I've known since fourth grade, fifth grade. Wow. Yeah. Uh, way back. Yeah. It wasn't until I started playing with the lives that I met that whole crew. I mean, okay. that was just a whole different 
world altogether. But we had moved to, so anyways, we got this place in Highland Park, and uh, his, and I was still working that driving job, and his, his actual little brother uh, was, knew who Nick Waterhouse was. Okay. Like, or just liked his music, and I guess Nick had posted something on Facebook looking for a keyboard player for a European tour. So his brother wrote my name in the comment section, which sent something to me. Right. And I didn't really know, you know, Nick's music that well. Right. I mean, I I had seen the Acura commercial, and I looked it up, and I was like, you know, it's pretty sweet, you know. Yeah. And uh, so I saw that, and I emailed him. I was like, hey, man, I got to play some pianos and send him some of me just playing, uh, whatever. And then he called me up, I think like 10 minutes later, we talked for a little bit and then, then I just took off, quit my job, didn't say anything. <laughs> and then, so you just, you just totally abandoned it? You're like, I don't know. Yeah. I, well, I kind of told him, I was like, Hey, uh, you know, uh, I'm going to go play music. Like I'm not coming back. Like I didn't want to quit. I think I didn't have time to quit. I couldn't give like my two weeks. Right. It's like right. I had to go like the next day. Wow. Or maybe not the next day, but really uh, close to, to when he quit. Yeah, it was like, all right, man, we're leaving in like five or six days, so what? you're good to go. You know, wow. Go. Did he did he pay for that flight, or did you have to pay for that flight when you got there? No, he. Yeah, all the flights are usually covered. Oh wow. Yeah, so we went. I think we went straight to Europe. For like a month, and then uh, just did that for played with him for a little over a year, mm-hmm. and then uh, which was great. That was my first like exposure to like real tour, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, hotel rooms and green rooms and riders and uh, you know long. Transit, transatlantic flights and, you know, getting to go to countries I've never been before, uh, like Scandinavia. I, I've been to, like, Germany and France before, just traveling. But, you know, getting to go to, like, Spain and Italy, and, you know, the list just, goes on and on. Yeah. And to do it, like, on someone else's dime and make money and... That's the dream right there. Yeah. Pretty much, it's, uh, you know, hindsight's always 20. I mean, you're there, and it's like, well, now, I mean, it's been on the road for, you know, almost seven years, uh, more or less, little breaks in between. And now it's more, uh, uh, a little more businessy, or a little more just like, a little, a little more professional, a little yeah. more just like a job, but you still, it's still great, yeah. It's, but sometimes you find yourself in like you're looking at this beautiful like scene, and you're just like, I just like would love like a In and Out burger or something, you know. It's like yeah. you're, you're tired of like speaking like whatever broken language, you know, that you're trying to like communicate with like you know, trying to get some cigarettes or where's a cool place to eat, you know. It's like after three weeks of that, you're like, all right. Like, it's like take me back to California. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's it's easy to complain sometimes. But yeah, in hindsight, it's like pretty much a dream. Yeah, that's that's awesome, man. What what um why didn't you stick with uh, Nick and his and his whole deal? Uh I don't know. I stuff think, changes in a way. Yeah, stuff changes. I think um it was, uh, I mean, certain people were leaving that had become close friends. Uh, and I mean, it's always hard when it's someone and then a band. Mm-hmm. You know, there's not any kind of, there's very little, like, collective decision making. And, you know, which, 
can be difficult to just kind of say like yes sir and just like kind of fall into line and you know do right. whatever and not that there was anything that I disagreed with but you know at some point it kind of it's just not that fun you know and it's I don't know why a lot of this a lot of the times this happens but uh, usually like a band will become real close and then the singer or if they can't like you know communicate communicate or I don't know I don't know if that was the case maybe that's just kind of how I read it but I was kind of like well you know and I think maybe I had like gotten like comfortable with the idea of like oh, well I can find more work mm-hmm. I don't really need this right now right uh so, uh, yeah, I mean, it was just kind of like time to move on. And there was no, like, nothing bad happened. You know, it's just time to, it's your time to just go. It's part ways, yeah. It's your time to go. Right. And, you know, I think that was kind of like a changing altogether because I think pretty much everyone left except maybe one of the singers, you know, and he just, like, he just like started over basically, you know, which sometimes is I'm sure good to do, you know, if you have a band and you know you have a certain set of songs and uh, you know after a while you just need like a fresh take, you know, some new musicians, and, right? Uh, some new blood some doing new, it, yeah, some yeah. new ideas. Just you know maybe someone plays drums just a little bit differently that. Uh, you like or that parts. you like or yeah it just fits something better you know yeah you never, you never stuff know. changes but you know I run into Nick every now and then uh, we've run into each other in Europe in Europe wow that's uh, that's pretty crazy is that is that well, weird like see, like yeah. you know that this person is like I mean because he, he lives up north right I've not really sure. I've heard L.A. I've heard oh, okay. Bay Area. I mean, like, it's just interesting that, like, he's in the same... St- like, you guys live in the, at least the same state. And yeah, then, like, yeah. you guys go see each other in another country. Like, Yeah. Well, I mean, it's usually, like... Not just, like, traveling, you know. It's, like, usually, like, a festival or something. Right, right. Um, yeah, you know. Get along just fine. You know, I think... I love his music. I think he's really talented. Mm-hmm. I... If he uh, wanted to play some time again, I'm sure he wouldn't say no. Maybe not on a tour, but, you know. Yeah, something. just a little gig. A little gig or something. Uh, Residency of some sort. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but anyways, um, so that opened the door clearly for you to go, like, tour and, like, kind of figure out, like, oh, this is, like, a, this is, like, a thing I can do. Like, yeah. this would be nice to pursue somewhat for at least a job purpose as well as, like, your kind of, like, dream ish in a way yeah totally. so uh so what was the next step in in the in your whole um experience with music like uh, following that well the, the departure after that i didn't get a gig <laughs> for like a couple years and i went back to that driving job oh boy for pepsi for no for the oh for the for, for the, the veterans veterans um by the way, Pepsi does sponsor this, so I I, I cut that out. No, I'm just, I understand. Just I understand completely. <laughs> We're Coca Cola people here. Uh, I prefer Coca Cola myself, but we keep that on yeah, Unfortunately, they didn't hire me at the time. Oh. I was trying to get a job with Budweiser. Yeah. Because uh, apparently those guys get paid more, and they work less, and you're just working for a beer company. You know, it's yeah. Like pretty. I think if I had that job, I might have Which is a very nice beer. Yeah. And uh, I do promote that. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a sponsorship, Budweiser. <laughs> Send some free gear my way. Yeah, and, you never know. And a nice little belt buckle for a little bit. Yeah. Budweiser, yeah. It's pretty nice. Yeah. What happened to it? Uh, I just gotta move on to a new belt. I I've had this belt that I'm wearing for like oh man, upwards of like six years. It's a good belt. It's good. I like it a lot. It's prior to worn. Prior to the belt that I have on now, I think I had. The same one for about nine years. Wow. Yeah. It's Cabell. Yeah. It was a Dolce & Gabbana. Oh, nice. Very classy. Uh, I don't know how I came up on it. I think it was given to me, and I didn't know that it was a nice belt or not. But 
it's like I have a new rivet in it, so it'll fit better, <laughs> like right. that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so um, what are we talking about? We're talking about how um, you, you left Nick Waterhouse. It was kind of hard to get a gig with oh, somebody right. else. Yeah, Budweiser or something. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't find work. Um, so I went back to driving, and then uh, um, I don't know what happened. Oh yeah, and then uh, so Jeff, my, our buddy Jeff Luger, who played drums with Nick, um, he started playing percussion with the Alalas on some tours. As like uh, on the bongos? Or yeah, like, just like um, little bongos oh, okay, okay, gotcha. and you know. Train whistle, like just weird shit. You say Jeff Luger? <laughs> Jeff Luger. Does he do some of the stuff for Reverberation? Like some of the mixes? Because I heard the name uh, before. He might have right. once or twice. I don't know. I don't know the uh, ins and outs really of mm-hmm. the whole. I mean, I know they've had like some guests. Uh, right, right. Mix, mixes, mixes, but yeah, yeah I, don't, I couldn't tell you if, if he did one or not. Anyways, hey, Jeff Luger. So Jeff Fluger was playing percussion with them, and um, they had started adding some piano live and like some slide guitar. I, I think Farmer Dave was playing with them for a little bit, uh, and and then they and then Jeff called me out of nowhere. And asked if uh, I wanted to play with the Alalas at Coachella, because Farmer Dave couldn't do it or they couldn't find someone. Yeah. So I said, sure, of course. You know, I, well, you know, I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, did Did you know him at the time, right? I'm assuming. The Alalas. Yeah. Uh, he, yeah. I mean, we had done a couple tours together. Um, Nick Waterhouse. Nick and, Waterhouse. And, because like they, they had that that split EP right with uh, Right. Yeah. Oh, and they were on the same record label. Yeah, whatever that was before. Innovative Leisure. Was it Innovative Leisure? Yeah. Oh, and I was thinking Mexican Summer. They, yeah, they were just on Mexican Summer, just this last album. Okay. I think. Um, Calico Review. Yeah. But do you play? You played on that, right? No. No. No, I haven't played on any studio stuff. We'll get which, there. We'll get there. Yeah. One day. <laughs> um. Um, Talking about how Coachella. Uh, Coachella, yeah. Played. So they needed like a fill in for Coachella. Mm-hmm. And I said, yeah, of course. Uh, that'd be great. And we did um, a couple shows, <laughs> a couple shows on the way out there. Uh, did like Tempe. Well, we were supposed to do a couple shows. Um, we did Tempe, and then I think we were supposed to do Vegas and then go up to Coachella. And we were opening up for. Uh, the Shakes, the Alabama Shakes. Oh, uh, all right. Yeah. What What year was that, roughly, if you remember? I would say 2015. 2015. Yeah, maybe the year before, but just right around. Yeah. There. Okay. Um. So, anyways, yeah, I filled in for that gig. Uh. And. Which was, you know, interesting because. You know, the all laws have, it, you know, it's this uh, very collective, you know, and this is where Robbie Simon comes in and, oh, okay. uh, you know, all the reverb uh, guys. Other, other guys that are in there. And, you know, my world, well, not my world, but, <laughs> you know, I was just exposed to just like this giant group of people, group of like, you know, artistic people. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it was like pretty crazy you know yeah it was yeah it was interesting to like just kind of join up like that uh for that one gig i think it was only supposed to be for the one for coachella Mm. because they were going to europe on a tour i think in like a couple weeks after that uh so you know we did coachella you know said our goodbyes and then their manager called me up Maybe like three or four days later, and then offered if I wanted to go to Europe with them. So, mm. 
that's when I quit that job again. <laughs> Ooh, second time. Just like, all right, well, yeah, I mean, that job, it's one of those jobs where it takes no, you know, it's like a week training. You know, it's not like... You need to know, like, this stuff in order to do this job. It's like... Well, it's, it's just a job where they just kind of throw you out there and you right. figure it out. Like, they'll teach you how to, like, strap them down, but, you know, it doesn't take any... Like, so many people come and go. Mm -hmm. It's such a bad job uh, in terms of, like, how it's run. I mean, you, like, don't know what your schedule is. You know, it's like you're dealing with... You're just, like, constantly the messenger and constantly just getting screamed at or yelled at by Vietnam veterans. <laughs> it's like a, oh, boy. You know, it's, uh, yeah, you don't really know fear until you just have, like, some vet in a chair just, like, cursing you out. And you, like, for, for reasons, like, you don't know why. Yeah. You know, you just get the call, like, hey, go pick up so-and-so down at the end of the hospital. Mm -hmm. And you get there, and they're just kind of like, where the fuck have you been? You know, they've been waiting for, like, six hours or oh, something like that, you know. Boy. So, lots of people came and go, you know, yeah. came and went, and it didn't matter if I showed up or didn't, so. So I quit again, just left, I didn't say, and that time I didn't say anything, I just didn't show up, and left. That's such a weird, like, dynamic of how to, like, run something. Oh, man, I, I'm getting stressed out just thinking about that, just being in that position, like, I was, was, yeah, it was picking those people, oh, boy. Um... I mean, it wasn't all bad, though, like I said. There right, some, right. Lots of good stuff about it. Just kind of stressful at times, I feel like. It, it was, I, I mean, I, the greatest thing, it was very humbling. You that's know, good. You get to see, you know, what it's really like down the road. Right. You know, in your 60s, I mean, 60s, 70s, 80s. I mean, you never know when it's your time, it's your time. But people, a lot of people assume they're just going to get old and, like, you know, be fine, but, I mean, we go to some of those nursing homes, and it was just, you know, I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Right. It's just so intense. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we don't have to get too, too deep into that. Oh, we'll come back. We'll loop around. Okay. But anyways, so you, so you, you quit the job, you go on tour in Europe, right? That's what you said? Yeah. Like, a couple days later? Mm hmm After doing a huge show like Coachella, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, that was crazy. I, you know, I never, I, I would never go to Coachella. Right. Personally, like, right. Uh, just not my, you know, I just, it has nothing to do with it. Cup of tea, you know, it's just, it's just not yeah. your thing. Some people went to it, some not, it's all right. But I get it, you know, because I know a lot of people out there, especially kids, you know, they go to school or they work and they're always just working for the weekend and then there's just this one massive weekend where you could just, let loose. Really let loose yeah. and go for it. So, I mean, I get it, for sure. Um, but I think once you're on the other side, too, then it's like, there's no way I could go back to, like, right. being in the crowd. I never thought about that. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Now it's too, like, uh, it's too comfortable on the other side. Like, I couldn't stand, I couldn't camp. I mean, I love to camp, but I couldn't, like, be in a festival and camp. Yeah, I, think, I feel like that's a different vibe altogether. Like, camping, it's, like, one thing, but then, like, camping at, like, a festival thing? Like, yeah. oh, man, it's, like, a, it's all of the beast, I feel like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I love to camp and fish and do all that stuff on the weekends or whatever. Uh, but, yeah, to just be surrounded by that, <laughs> that kind of... Uh, environment. Just, you know, insane... Attitude and like vir environment, you know, I, I I couldn't handle it personally. I would freak out and like have like a panic attack or something. Yeah, definitely. That yeah, that's crazy. Oh boy. But yeah, so we went to went to Europe, and then kind of just been doing that for the last, I guess, three years. Oh boy. Yeah. It's a good deal. Yeah, we went spent the Europe several times. Went to. Uh, Mexico a few times, a couple times. Did some U.S. tours. Yeah, it's just kind of been a, a steady gig for the last few years. Uh, got to really know uh, a lot of their friends and, you know, very uh, 
It's a it's an interesting group. I feel like it's a very tight group where maybe they don't really allow a lot of outsiders into outsiders. I I mean they're very friendly. Yeah, yeah. Very friendly group of people, of course, and they're uh, you know. When you, when you very, talk to them, yeah. Very, you know, open, open arms. And yeah, yeah. Come hang out. And, super nice. But in terms of, like, you know, stuff that goes on behind the scenes, you know, they're very specific. You know, and that's one reason why uh, I've also stayed with them for so long. You know, I, I appreciate the time that they spend on whatever they're doing, whether it's... Uh, album artwork or a t-shirt or uh you know even like their own like reverb mixes i mean they're just very, they want it they're trying to create like the best product possible that they can right that's respectable and that's that's good yeah it's it's, it's nice good, to be you know surround yourself with those kinds of people right and, same mindset you know yeah support your supporters kind of a deal mm, right <laughs> um so, all, all loss, that, that's cool. But also, your own thing that, that is just uh, happened or is, is, is becoming of something. Mm-hmm. Your 45 is coming out. Yeah. I'd, I'd love to talk about that if, if we could. Sure. That would be rad. So, why Warren Zevin's Steady Rain? Why, why that? Why that song? Um, well... I mean, I just, just to give, uh, we'll, we'll start over, we'll start from the beginning. So, perfect. the, the 45 was not my idea or, you know, was never like the plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I had just, yeah, I mean, I've written songs over the years and, you know, just kind of put them on the shelf and then, like maybe uh, one day kind of a thing or maybe one day, or whatever, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, like, a lot of me wanted to just go out there and just play and try, like, just see what it's like, you know, instead of trying to, like, do something of my own and just strike out there and, like, you know, trying to get people to, like, represent you or, like, hey, man, like, you want to sign me to your label or, like, I just, I I don't have that in me. Mm -hmm. Um, So I just never really... Try, it's like pursue it. Like pursue that. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah. So it's a back burner kind of a thing. Like that'd be nice, but you know, whatever. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, and then I, I had just randomly recorded, like the Steady Rain, and the Paris Texas song, and a couple others, just because I just wanted to. Like I had, uh, there was a. A four track, a Tascam four track that was at a buddy's house for like, you know, years. It was just sitting there, and I was like, all right, I'm gonna take this thing home. And it didn't work, and I opened it up, and you know, it just needed a couple belts, like real simple stuff. You get it on eBay, it's like plumber parts. Right. Uh, so that's kind of like what made me want to record, because you know, it's a nice like '80s, well thing, you know, like, four yeah. track. You know, I don't. Have it. it recently burned out, so it's in the garage. I was garage. just trying to move my eyes like But that's why I recorded. And then, I, you know, I just... A buddy of mine had shown me that song, Steady Rain. Uh, and I just love, like, that, that just kind of slow, groovy songs. You know, it's... Uh, and, that's what, and that's a really perfect example of, like, uh, a sound that I like. The drums, the guitar his voice so I just wanted to see if I could play it how it sounded mm-hmm. uh, so I recorded that one and you know there was when the idea came up for 45 uh, you know the laws manager had approached me and said like hey man we're trying to like we're thinking about doing this record label thing you know, how about throwing Paris, Texas on a 45? And I was, you know, sure, that, of course, you know, that'd be great. Uh, and, you know, they covered the cost and 
you know, I mean, it was a very just like easy thing, like, uh, just like happened, um, which felt great because, you know, here's a group of, uh, people that I respect for their musical taste and their musical or their like artistic taste. And here they are approaching me saying like, Hey, we want to put your song out. So it felt great, you know, uh, it was very like exciting. And, um, I was, so I said, yeah, 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 let's do it. So we, they wanted, well, we all wanted to put Paris, Texas on there. And then there was a number of B sides that we were going through. And then I remembered that I had recorded the Zivon song and I had sent it to my friend who told me about the song. And he thought it was pretty cool, so he sent it to, he, you know, forwarded it to the laws and their manager, and then we all just kind of agreed that that would be the B-side. Uh, it's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, it was all like a very kind of organic, like that's, like I'm so glad it happened that way. Right. Not like and, you pushing uh, for it, but it just like kind of like spontaneously just like kind of happen just yeah. over time that's cool do you want to plug like the the show at, at zebulon right that's happening soon friday the, friday boom yeah because i'm gonna post this probably today okay. like so like hopefully if somebody listens to it friday wait what, what friday time? at Eight. zebulon uh yeah i mean shows I'll, i'm gonna do a set like at eight Mm. And then Reverberation will just DJ for the rest of the night. Okay. I think it was already, like, a Reverberation night. Oh, okay. And one of our friends who helps, she works with the Laws manager, like, uh, you know, just a lot of behind-the-scenes, behind the uh, like, booking flights and stuff like that. She works there. So it's just kind of like, yeah, you might as well have it there. Right. Uh I mean, there's not really any bars in L.A. that I'm so particular to that I could throw a show at, you know, or I'd want to play. Right. Uh, so, yeah, Zebulon, Friday. Eight. Eight o'clock. And Eight then ish. also, the people who can't make it out to that, they can find it on Tiki Rocket, right? Tiki Rocket, yeah. And it's pre-sale right now, right? Pre-sale right now, but they ship them out. There's some people that have bought them already and have gotten them in the mail. Okay. The 45. That's a good deal. Uh, well, you can either go to TikiRocket.com or CalicoDiscos.com. It's just like a straight link to the 45 itself. Okay. Good deal. But there's plenty of good other Laws merch on the Tiki Rocket if people are so inclined Plug to, it. to Plug buy it. that too. Yeah. It's a good deal. Shirts and records and whatnot uh, all types of good stuff yeah it's a good deal yeah. all right so awesome and who did the cover art for that or like at least like the the art for the oh that's all that's all rob too it's a good deal like, i don't know if you looked at it yet or not but no i i, I haven't been able to see it in, in person oh this is actually really really cool really he's really good with art he's, he's my favorite artist and it was, it was really cool talking to him like uh -huh. the first time i was like wow like it's, it's, it was just kind of like mind-blowing like, oh, like that's this is like insane like pretty pretty smart guy pretty yeah. clever very funny very nice guy very approachable nice. approachable yeah. which yeah we had for. yeah we had uh he had like sent over some ideas and we all kind of collectively agreed on something agreed on you know how it should look i mean the sleeve will probably be pretty standard for whatever they use like i don't think the sleeve is a tim hill specific sleeve right. just, that'll just be like the calico sleeve but when the tim hill specific sleeve comes out oh boy better watch yeah. out <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll we'll see when it comes to that well that's really yeah, awesome if and when. that's that's really really cool yeah i was stoked uh, that they got well, not that they got Robbie, but that he agreed to do it i'm sure he's they got him they snagged him snagged him you know snagged him up uh, yeah, because Robbie, the laws manager, he's like, well, what do you, you know? What do you want to do for art? Wait, is is Robbie the 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 laws manager? So there's Robbie Simon, the oh, artist, and right. there's Robbie uh, Combs, who's their manager, okay, gotcha, gotcha. who's like their 
high school friends. Okay. Some of them. And, uh, yeah. Besides so Pedro, obviously. He's right. From where it was, Nevada, something like that? Utah. Utah. I think it's Salt Lake City, yeah. All right. Yeah. Is he Mormon? He might be Mormon, right? No, he's not Mormon. <laughs> I don't know many uh, Persian families that Mormonism. switch over to uh, Mormonism. Just select few. Select few, yeah. And that's okay. That's all right. I mean, I'm sure there are, yeah. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah. Do you believe in in uh, some sort of a god while we're on this topic? Sure. Um, I guess less specifically a particular one uh, more recently. Uh, I mean, you know, I grew up uh, very right-wing conservative household, you know. Folks still go to church. Uh, you know, went to church twice on Sundays, once on Wednesdays. Oh, so did the whole thing. I uh, went to private junior high and high school for one year, and then I left to go to a public school. Mostly because my grades were so bad. La Habra, yeah. right? La Habra. So I was at Whittier Christian High School for my freshman year, and I was just, I think I got straight D's. Uh, Why was that? Did you just, just like, whatever? Like, I just you know, didn't do really it. Care. Do what needed to be done. I just, like, yeah. I was too occupied with nothing really in particular. Like, I didn't even party, never drank in high school, never smoked. You, you never drink. drank or did anything in high school? No. Like, at all? No. We, I, we had, I, like, me and my friends just went and did really stupid stuff. Like, we would film, like, water ballooning cars or... <laughs> like we skated a lot we would skate and like film it and then I was never really that good at skating myself but you know our, our group of friends or we'd like you know just I mean such like such dumb like we would watch so much like we watched too much like Jackass yeah it sounded like a CKY video right? so we would do skating. like that kind of stuff and no one yeah no one we didn't have, like, uh, an older brother that could, like, get us stuff. Like, we were obviously way too young to buy anything. And all of our parents, most of them were, you know, had some kind of Christian background, you know. Because right. we all went to a private school. So, I mean, yeah, if it was on the table, maybe we would have. But we just didn't have the resources to, you know, no one's parents had a liquor cabinet. Right. So right. we couldn't. You know, break it and... Like, rate it. Rate yeah, it couldn't rate it. It couldn't do anything. Uh, but yeah, we definitely got into uh, lots of different trouble. I mean... Do you mind talking about that? that I mean... Sure. That's okay? Sure. Uh, what kind of trouble were you getting into? What, what, like like, like, like doing talk? things to people that you shouldn't do things to. Right. Like, not... Obviously knowing it now, but back then it's like, whatever... Right. Well, I mean, like, we had a water balloon launcher, and we'd, like, be from, like, one guy's backyard, and we'd just, like, shoot it onto the highway, which is totally unsafe and, like, ridiculous. Right. And, or, like, we'd be, like, standing on a bridge throwing water balloons or, like, eggs. I mean, you know, toilet papering houses, but, like, doing it, like, in a way that was, like, like, it wasn't, like, a half-ass job, you know. Oh, no, yeah. Pretty like go full bore into what you're doing. Right. <laughs> or we had like this, you know, like million candle power like flashlight, and we just like drive to like girls' houses and just like flash it in their window. You know, like so so dumb. Like, you know, we just you know we just got our license. It's like well, you know, this was before. You know, we no one had cell phones. Right. Like, there wasn't. Uh, you know, we didn't have, like, the internet to rely on or, like, you know, we just, that's what you do. You just get in your car and drive to the movies or, you know, and just do dumb shit. <laughs> but there was, like, some time, you know, where we just, you just hit the wrong car. And oh boy, yeah. inside the car was, like, you know, three OG guys from Whittier or from Norwalk or Downey or wherever. Yeah. Uh, Boyle Heights or something like that. Or, Boyle Heights all the time here? You know, so I mean, you, you don't hit their car. So you would, like, we'd hit their car and they saw us or something and then they would just get out. I mean, we'd just be chased around the town. You know? Oh, like, boy. Did that have multiple times? Oh, yeah. of course. 
Oh boy. Uh, we were nervous. We were like, oh man, scared this, might, this might go. Of course. Like, you're, I mean, you're just hopping fences into like backyards you don't know, trying to like get away. <laughs> you know, or like, we put like the duct tape upside down on like a stop sign. Right. So like when they go, then it sounds like they have a flat tire. Right. Uh, I mean, it's just so ridiculous. But that's, you know, that's what we did instead of partying. <laughs> But, you know, we got we got the cops calling us plenty of times. Have you ever been arrested, if you don't mind me asking? I haven't been arrested. Pretty pretty clean. Uh, never had a speeding ticket. Never had a speeding ticket? Never, uh, wow. never been in an accident that I caused. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm a pretty mellow guy. Like, I never really rage or... Right. Charge or like go hard. Like there's no reason. There's no reason like I would be driving fast. Right. You know I'm never like in a hurry to get anywhere. I get there when I get there. You know it's even for shows though. You're just, you're just like calling like where are you? Oh man. Well. I'm on my way. <laughs> if it's an all alone show, I'm definitely not the person they're calling to uh, see who's on their way. Oh boy. Can can I ask you off mic who who it is? It's all of them. Ooh. Even, even Spencer. Even Spencer sometimes. Oh boy, even that. Even that. Uh, not Miles though. Even Miles. Oh, I mean I've been there too, <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean it's not like a, not like a, like awfully like. No one's showing it like two hours late, but <laughs> you know that everyone's just sure. like taking like their. You know, sweet time. Like I, I sometimes I'll show up like ten minutes late and I'll be like, that's close. And then it's like, you know, you'll get a text on like the thread. It's be like, oh, I'm just leaving my house. I'll be there in about forty five minutes. You know, and then like none of it really matters. You right. Know, you get there when you get. This there. is for sound check, right? Sound checks or whatever it is or practice or. Oh boy. And that's just kind of like the world. You know, I don't. I don't know. I'm sure there's lots of bands that are. Like that. You know, either like that, but also are the other way where everything's on time or, you know. Nick Waterhouse. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of a, maybe it's a musician thing. I don't know. But having crazy jobs, you know, that you had to be on time for the first, like, for basically all my 20s. Now I'm just like naturally... I always give myself enough time. And since I live in Whittier, I always give myself time to get to LA. Yeah. Knowing that it's going to take an hour yeah. or more. You know what's crazy? You're the closest podcast I've ever done. From, yeah, from sure. my From my house. I'm sure. Which is only just Imperial to like whatever that that, that, that one street. I was, I was like, wow, he's like, what's off of Imperial? Like, it's yeah. crazy. If I say it too much, I feel like I'm giving away too much. I- Imperial, and it, when it drops off in Compton, let's just say that. Let's just, oh. let's just say. Oh, well, I don't care. For all the five I, listeners. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, even if there was lots of people, I doubt they'd want to come down and. Maybe unless I egg their car or something. But. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of OG Bullet Heights people who listen to this. It's like the main. Like, there, hey, you, space. Never, you never know. There might it's be. a podcast for everything out there. Mm-hmm. That's, that's this one. I'm sorry I had to say that, but I gotta leave it in. That's right. <laughs> the OG buddy of people. Well, you want to plug anything else before we shut it off? Uh, Tiki Rocket, Zebulon. Just, I mean, you play sometimes opening up, right? For all of us. Just, re- just recently. Uh, to no pianos. Yeah. Um. Yeah, uh, we did a few shows in Jersey a couple weekends ago, and they let me open up, um, which is great, because, uh, you know, instead of just playing some random shows, it's kind of, you know, it's a, it's a big uh, silver spoon to just, like, notice with yeah, you know, just open up for us, which is, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would be, like, hoping for something like that. You know, especially, you know, I don't, I, 
I mean, I've been on the road a long time, but in terms of like being on my own as like a musician or whatever, like pretty, you know, basically a tadpole, you know, when it comes to it, like never played in front of people really. I mean, I have, but not legitimately. So to, you know, be offered to open up for the laws and easily play for a hundred to a few hundred people, depending on the size of the venue. Yeah, that's a good deal. I, I, sorry, I got one other question. What was the first concert you ever played? Like, what, how did that go down? The first concert? Yeah. As, like, what it is now? No, just in general. Just, like, your first going up, uh, in, like, onto a stage with a crowd of people. Like, in, like not like a crowd, but, like, whatever many amount of, like, people. Well, like, like any like, time like, in yeah, my life? Yeah, like, what was the first time? Uh... Um, I don't know. Maybe like a chapel. <laughs> it's a good start. It's a good, <laughs> like humble, a, humble like a, beginning. Yeah, like a Wednesday morning playing like a worship song. Right. Like I had, so, like around fifth grade, you know, I, I told my dad, you know, I want to play guitar or something. So I was like playing like classical stuff. I was playing like violin and trumpet. And it's like I don't, I want, you know, I started started to like Zeppelin and like the Beatles and like. Hendrix. The devil's music. Yeah. And I was like, oh, you know, I want to play guitar. And he's like, well, you know, being the uh, just reasonable, bright guy that he is, he's like, well, why don't you play bass? You know, there's plenty of guitar players out there. Bass is a great instrument. Why don't you go play bass? So I picked up bass in fifth grade and played that all the way through the end of high school, like in all the jazz bands and all that oh, stuff. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is great because I still love bass today. Uh, but when I did that, um, so I, I was playing bass, and then my buddy who I had moved to Highland Park with, uh, he was on drums, and another guy was, a couple of our other friends were like on guitar or something like that. We, I don't even think we sang, we just like played the worship music, and then like, you know, whatever, the choir kids sang it or something like that. Awesome. I don't know. But, you know, this it was a school of about, 500 or something so you know you're looking at you know 450 people out there listening to you I don't know where those other 50 are but <laughs> well I'm sure some of them you know either cut or yeah 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 whatever it was I don't know why I came up with 450 but that, that's a good number I feel like that's a good number to just like base it on yeah, around 450 just ballpark it ballpark it yeah. yeah something like that that's good yeah yeah so that was first one yeah I, you know and here I am today Still living in Whittier, and we well, gotta go back to the church. So that's the real question. When is that split EP gonna come out? You and the the, the church choir. I think I think we'll pick that up. I would love to do something with the church choir. I can come up with a few things that a church choir could do. That'd be cool. I'm done, at least a little bit. Yeah. Like Tim Hill and the Whittier, like I don't know, church. Like choir. Yeah, we can come up with uh, That's some kind of like a gospel album or something. That'd be cool. Yeah. I haven't heard a good gospel album in years. There's yeah, not too many people do it now. I mean, I'm sure there's so much. I you know, I'm not. I'm not too versed on like what's going on and uh, you know releases of music nowadays, but. Right. I'm sure there's some beautiful gospel out there that someone's making. A buddy of mine gave me a, a few records. Um, he just, he's like I don't want these anymore I was like okay cool like whatever I'll just take them I was like, I was like flipping through them I was like whatever it said San Quentin prisoner like choir and I was like what sounds, and like, and like the, the front was just like like all the prisoners like lined up like looking this way and like it's just like it looks very nice I was like wow alright is this from like the 50s or something uh yeah I think like late 50s early 60s yeah yeah well they were still making kids you know you just like learn music just like you learned math. So, I mean, I'm sure all those people, whether they ended up in jail or not, had some kind of music background, you know. I could probably they? still read music. You know, I can't even read music. But well, but. Some people can, some people can. I'm not saying that I'm one who can read music. <laughs> that made it seem like, I mean, I can, but... No, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I understand where you're going with it. Yeah. Um, I, all right, well, that's it. I think that's it.
Sure. No, if, no, if you, no uh, Harry Dean Sen questions. Huh? I mean, we can get into it. I, 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 I feel like we gotta wrap this up because it was like two thirty. But if, you, if we can still go, on this, let's still go. Well, I mean, I can do a few more minutes. All right, Harry Dean Sen. Let's get into him. Great, great actor. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I like him a lot. He looked very old for all of his life. Mm. And he's, he's like that one person that like I always looked at. It's like. Is it so bad to smoke? Because like he smoked till it's like deathbed. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's crazy, man. I think about that every day. Really? Yeah. Like yeah. Like it it kind of baffles me. Like I mean, he looked like really, really like he looked like death. Like when he died, but he still wasn't. He still wasn't dying. He's like born like nineteen thirty three. I think it was or thirty two. He lived. Might have been earlier than 2017. that. Because he ser- he served in uh, World War Two. Or yeah, he was like in. Okinawa or something. I didn't even like know that, but yeah, that's crazy. And I also know that his dad was a barber, mm. and uh, he hated smoking. And like people who would be, he'd be like cutting their hair, and then like you'd get like the little um, sanitizer that like put the combs in, you know, it's like mm. blue dye. Like he would like he like get like a tip of like, a pen or something like that, and like he like hit like hit the tip of the cigarette, mm. and it'd go on. Like, and like the guy was trying to light it again, and it just wouldn't, yeah, yeah. just wouldn't spark up. But that's insane. That's like crazy that he lived that long and, and smoked that much. My one of my buddies said that he smoked American Spirits, like it's like light blues. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm going uh, somebody's yeah, somebody's I wouldn't. Statement, I wouldn't know. I mean, I he was in that movie Lucky. Uh, I don't know. Did you see that one? I haven't seen that one. No. He's you know he's like pretty old and it it's like came out. Well, it came out after he died, but. Uh, but yeah, I think he was smoking like American Spirit Orange or something like that. Uh, but yeah, who knows? I don't, I don't know how long American Spirits have been around. I think 1980s. 1980s. I'm, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm sure somebody maybe convinced them. It's like, hey, well, if you're gonna keep smoking, at least like dial it back a little. Maybe bit. maybe go organic or something. But actually, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't like American Spirits. That, that much. Do I don't. You, I don't. Do you, you smoke, yeah. Yeah. What, what's your brand? What's your usually Camel. Camel. Blue or filters. Uh, Turkish whatever. Royal. Turkish Royal. No, nah, I usually don't. I usually don't mess around with those or like the uh, yeah any of like the the Turkish silver or whatever. Uh, there's too many. There's too, too many. Too, yeah, too many. Um, I look at all them behind the gas station like, wow, it's a lot. It's a lot of, it's a lot of variety. But it, yeah, yeah, it's weird, you know, because I, I started smoking when I was like 18. And I mean, it was just such a fascination. You know, it's like I, I have to, you know, watching Dylan do it and actors and like, uh, you know, whatever Western and then smoking it, and I just thought it was the coolest thing in the world. I, I, I kind of still do. I, I I'm like a little kid about it. I can't. Uh, I, I definitely don't smoke that much. I mean, when you hear about, you know, uh, people that have died from lung cancer, and it's possible that I could too. If if I keep going, I mean, I'm only 32, but it's all right. You know, a lot of those people, you know, they're smoking two, three packs a day, you know, which is cr- crazy to even think of. Like, I couldn't even imagine smoking that many cigarettes in a day. I mean, there's been nights where, you know, you sat around a fire and took care of a 24-pack and a pack of cigarettes. I mean, like, with your friends. Right. But, you know, I... To yourself, though, that's, that's insane. Yeah. And my mom used to smoke. I mean, before I was born, but, you know. Even when she was younger, she was a nurse and, you know, still smoked. I mean, she smoked a pack a day or something like that. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. Some people just have the genes for it. I mean, you know, lots of people have died from smoking related, you know, whether it's lung cancer or heart disease or, you know. Except Harry Dean Stanton. Except Harry Dean Stanton. And that's it. And that's, and that's what you got to just focus on if you're smoking. Well, yeah. Just you live to that guy's life. Just go for broke, I guess. I, yeah. I mean, I guess after a certain amount of time, you just you just got to... By the way, Dad, if you're listening, 
I know you're smoking still, so knock it off. You too, mom. All right. I think that's it. I think that's good. Just I'm gonna call my parents and then that's it. Yeah. Groove Burrow, right? B U R Groove underscore B U R R O. Yeah. On Instagram, go follow him. Keep in contact with him. Just check out what he's doing because he's doing some fantastic stuff. Tim, hey, thanks, pleasure, sir. Thank yeah. you. I don't know why we shook and we're recording the handshake. Nobody's gonna know that.